watermelon and apples. So we are gonna start today. You guys are gonna start with a pencil. I'm gonna start with a Sharpie just so you guys can see, but you will be using a Sharpie later. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna start with the watermelon because the watermelon's the biggest thing of the page. First thing is this, you wanna hold your paper side to sideways. This way we can fit the most watermelon and apples on our page. To start it with a watermelon, start with a diagonal line. You can put it anywhere you want. We're gonna do two today. And then you're going to make a curve, just like a big smiley face. Once you're done with that, you're gonna make it a little thicker. So now you have two. So this would be the rind. So this would be the green part of the watermelon and this would be the red part. Then you can add a few seeds. You don't wanna add a hundred seeds and seeds are usually kind of, they seem to be almost in a row and they seem to be together a lot of times. So you might wanna do some doubles. Over here, we're gonna do another diagonal cause we're gonna do another watermelon. Now you do not have to put your watermelon here. You can put it down here, you can put it up here, you can put it there, it's your choice. Make a curve, just like a big smiley face again. And then we're gonna make it a little thicker for the rind. Again, we're gonna add our watermelon seeds. Now, if you don't want your watermelon to be perfect on the top, cause sometimes when you cut it, it's not, you can make it a little bumpy too, like that. And then you would erase those parts. So if you want it to look a little bit more realistic, you probably wanna make it a little jaggedy. Now, the next step we're gonna do is apples. Now apples are smaller than the watermelon usually. Every once in a while you get a huge apple and sometimes you get a really small watermelon, but in this case you usually have smaller apples. So let's draw a circle here, maybe a circle here. We can overlap a few. You can have one coming off the page, like they rolled away, because this is kind of supposed to look a little bit more realistic. Once you do the apples, this is the easy part. This is how you make the stems. You make a little curve, like little smiles. Doesn't matter which way. Sometimes you might not see it because it's on the other side. This one I'm gonna leave alone, and this one will just look like it rolled away. After you do that, the stems go like this. They're straight with a bump on the top. Straight with a bump on the top. Straight with a bump on the top. So if you do it this way, it's two straight lines, and then an oval on the top. I'll do it over here just so you can see. Two straight lines and then an oval on top. And that's how you do the top of the stem. You're not gonna draw that on your page. That was just for mine. Now, we have the basic idea as to where the watermelon and the apples are. So this is like a picnic table on the ground or on a table. And when, sometimes when you have a tablecloth, it's not perfectly over the whole table. So we're gonna make this on a diagonal. So the diagonal shape is your tablecloth, and then this part is gonna be either the table or the grass or whatever you'd like. Now, here comes the best part. After you are done drawing, you're gonna trace. After you're done tracing, now here comes the best part. So I kind of made a mistake. You are going to paint the watermelon and the apples. So let's start with the watermelon. So for watercolors, if you haven't used them before, you're gonna need a cup of water, a brush, and your watercolors. If you don't have watercolors, you can do this with color pencil. You would just blend. If you don't have color pencils, you can use crayons and you can blend. So we can use almost anything you want as long as you have it at your house. So first thing for watercolors, dip your brush in the water, make a little puddle. And you guys need one more thing that I keep forgetting every time is you're gonna need a paper towel or a napkin. And that's to stop the blobs. I'm gonna take red and we're gonna paint the watermelon. Now my watermelon's kind of really an odd color, but that's okay. Take your time, add water, and it's okay if it's not perfectly solid because watermelons sometimes have like a translucent look and that's what gives you that look in watercolors. And translucent means you can see through it. I'm gonna add some more water because I can see my brush is getting dry, but oh no, I have a puddle. So if I have a puddle, I take my paper towel, tap, 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 and then it kind of gives this really cool look to it. Now, for the apples, we do have some green apples, some red apples, and some yellow apples. So let's show you how to shade. Let's do a green apple. So if I'm gonna do a green apple, I'm gonna grab some yellow first. I'm going to paint 
my apple completely yellow first. Okay, so this is for a green apple. Then I'm going to take my green watercolor and watch what I do. I then go on top and I let the blend blend and I just do the one side. Okay, then I take my paper towel, tap, 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 and then I have a really cool blended green apple. Now, if I want a red apple, I'm actually going to use orange. I know that sounds kind of strange to use orange, but apples, you're going to have some other colors with it. And that might be a little dark I used. So add a little more water. If it's too dark, just tap, tap, tap. And now I'm going to add red on top. So this is going to add a little bit of blend, blending to it. And my red seems to be a little bit like orange, so that's okay. So you know what? In my case, I'm going to add a little yellow on it too. I can add a little yellow. And then I have a really nice red apple. To do a yellow apple, we can do this. Yellow. Paint it all yellow. And don't worry about the stems because we can go back over the stems later. And then we're going to add for this one, we're going to add a little orange. Just a little bit. And that's it, that's our yellow apple. And then you wanna tap, 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 tap. Once you've done your apple and your watermelon, oh, you know what I totally forgot? The rind. Make sure that you do the rind. The rind is green. Okay, so take your time and paint the rind green. When you are finished, you're gonna paint this part, which is your tablecloth, one color. And what we're gonna do is this, before you do the Tablecloth, I'm gonna do one thing that I forgot to do earlier. Actually, we can do it now. You're gonna, if you're gonna do a blue tablecloth, you want to do dark blue underneath your apples and your watermelon. So right underneath, you're just gonna do this with the dark color. Same thing if you have a crayon or color pencil, just make these lines underneath. These are the shadows. Okay, so I do this underneath. This one I won't see because it's off the page. After that, I'm gonna take my watercolors, take the lighter color, and I paint around it. I can blend it in a little bit. And then it gives us this really cool shadow effect. Can you see that? I love it. It's like one of my favorite things to do. Remember, only paint the tablecloth this color because you are going to paint this part another color so this could be table it could be grass it's up to you I'm gonna make my grass okay, so take your time I'm not gonna finish mine but you are going to take your time this is a slow lesson this is a take your time go slow and paint when you are finished you are going to take your phone or your camera on your computer center your picture just like this take off the live button if you have that on take a picture then you will post it into Schoology under the assignments. This way I can give you a grade, I can see your artwork, and I can't wait to see them because I know they're gonna be great. So like I said, it's the end of summer, the beginning of fall, take your time, make sure you try to make it realistic as you can, don't forget the shadows, and you can always stop and pause when you need to. And if you have any questions, use the chat or you can use Clever to email me and I will be glad to answer your questions. I cannot wait to see your amazing artwork.